Welcome to St. Paul United Methodist Church service under the leadership of Reverend Richard Stryker. We are located on 1500 6th Avenue North, Birmingham, Alabama 35203. Our number is 205-252-3236.
Today I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And the heading for this particular uh, uh, topic is the birth and youth of Esau and Jacob. We will be reading uh, verses 24 through 34. When her time came to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle. So they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fun to gain. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore, he was called Edom. Jacob said, First, sell me your birthright. Esau said, I'm about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank, and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, um, Jacob did some good cooking, much better than what I'm trying to do here. Jacob did some really good cooking, and it was uh, superb. Uh, it tastes good, smelled good. In fact, on one occasion, Jacob uh, had done a lentil stew, just like I'm trying to do here today. He had prepared some lentil stew, and as it was cooking, simmered uh, his older brother Esau came from hunting. Now Esau was an accomplished hunter. He was very good at what he did. But Jacob was also good at what he did. He stayed around the tent and he cooked and all of that. And uh, so when, when Esau came to 
see how Jacob was doing all this good cooking, he said, man, that thing smells good. Can I have some of that? And we'll move over here. And he said, can I have some of that? And Esau was asking for lentil stew. However, in the, the new revised standard version, call it that red stuff, that red stuff. J Jacob saw an opportunity in that red stuff to say to his brother Esau, if you want some of this, if you want some of this, you have to promise me, you have to give me your birthright. Your birthright. The birthright went to the first son. It consisted of a double portion of the inheritance, probably meaning that the double portion of the um, property went to, to that, that, that first son. He also became head of the family and will become responsible for the maintenance of the younger sons or the widows and all of that. Further, he generally received the blessing which placed him in close and favor covenant relationship with God. You know, birthright was a big deal. So Jacob suggested, I will trade you a little for a lot. I will trade you this lentil stew, all, all of the lentil stew you want. You can have it. All of this red stuff that you want, you can have it in exchange for the birthright. Esau said, hey, I am about to die. Now tell me, was he really about to die? I doubt it. <laughs> I don't think he was starving that much. He may have been hungry, but he wasn't starving. But he said, of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob insisted, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew. He ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus it is said that Esau despised his birthright. What are people willing to give up in exchange for the red stuff? The red stuff may not even be a bad thing really. I mean think about it, the lentil stew that we we we're trying to cook over there. It's a good thing. Lentil stew is a good thing. It's, it's a healthy meal to have. So, so, so the red stuff isn't always bad. It's a good, good stuff. But sometimes the price is just too high. Price is just too high. It is amazing, you know, how when you have a college student, a new college student in your home, how many Letters come. How many application forms will come in your mailbox telling them, hey, apply for this credit card. You know, you know uh, it, it, apply for this red stuff. And I, I began to wonder about that in a group called The Balance. They said college students are a credit card primary prospect. Because one, they're hopeful that even if the young person cannot pay, the parent will pay. But even, even just as important, I think it is the second reason, is that they feel that if they can give credit to young people, that person will have a longer lifespan to keep giving them money. Just keep paying on the minimum wage, the minimum amount that's due, minimum amount, and for a longer period of time. So they go out very early trying to sell the red stuff to young people. Because there were lots of years of interest payment for the credit card company. Credit card, like the red stuff, or lentil stew, can be useful. But a trade off sometimes is a lifetime of payment. The next time you are about to close a deal, maybe you at a car dealership or something like that, or you're, you're about to make some kind of arrangement. Or maybe even at what uh, what is called something timeshare, and you're not quite sure what to do, and someone tells you you got to hurry. I want to suggest to you that you think twice. And see, is this a red stuff? 
Do I need to rather wait? You know, listen to the words of God as regarding uh, coronavirus scams that are going on right now. It says, history has shown, and it's on the IRS website, it says, history has shown that criminals take away, take every opportunity to perpetrate a fraud on unsuspecting victims, especially when a group of people is vulnerable or in a state of need. If you ever find yourself in a state of need, if you ever feel like you're vulnerable, think twice. If you think you're in a hole now, chances are if you reach out after the red stuff, there's a chance that hole will become deeper and wider. If you ever feel famished, so to speak, and you feel like you need help, be cautious about what you reach out to gain that help from. The scripture. In our reading of Jacob, what his lifespan, we know Jacob is a good man. But even good people sometimes exploit others and exploit situations. Are you sometimes tempted to exploit situations? Are you finding yourself trading the red stuff at the expense of your neighbor, at the expense of your brother, at the expense of your sister? You know, some people say, I'm just doing my job. Jesus says, what you do to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you are doing to me. Think about it also, the golden rule says, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. And so if we are peddling red stuff for a great deal of profit, maybe we should take another look at our lives. It is not too late to change to shift to a new opportunity. There are also those who by doing nothing allow themselves to be exploited. It's interesting how, how Esau remembered the story of that day of the red stuff. After Jacob, uh, after Jacob outrightly went to his father and stole the blessing, that's in addition to the birthright, Jacob stole the blessing. This is what Esau had to say about the situation. Esau said, Isn't he rightly named Jacob? This is the second time he has taken advantage of me. He took my birthright and now he has taken my blessing. Yes, he took Jacob, he took Esau's blessing. But as far as taking that birthright, Esau was right there with him, compromising his birthright and practically giving it up for the red stuff. You know, the first time uh, you were, uh, 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 Esau was, was, was complacent partner in getting rid of his birthright. Some people sometimes say they complain about how society is. But yet, they don't ever go out to vote. I want to suggest to you that such persons are complacent in making sure that red stuff are perpetrated for little or nothing. And yet, they, they end up like Esau thinking, hey, somebody cheated me on something. No, quite often we allow ourselves to be exploited, allow ourselves to be cheated out of the little bit that we do have. Now, what about the role of the church in the red stuff thing? Is there a role for the church? Is there a role for believers? You know, from the early days of St. Paul, United Methodist, and throughout the civil rights heyday, St. Paul participated in preventing the exploitation of people uh, that were in need, or people who needed the red stuff. People needing equal rights, people needing justice, people needing to live in peace, society needing love. St. Paul was right there with it. That advocacy has continued throughout uh, the life of St. Paul. 
We work with Greater Birmingham Ministries. We work with Alabama Coalition for Immigrant Justice. All of these agencies are a way of making sure that red stuff are not giving out for, 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 for a whole lot more. Give it just a little bit in exchange for a lot. I was looking in an office and there were information there on payday loan, warning people about staying away from payday loan. But quite often, people get a little bit of money, but can never seem to pay it all. That's red stuff right there. That's red stuff. The church can be in the business of warning people about the dangers of some of these things. When I read the interaction between Esau and Jacob, I said to myself, what if an adult, well, they were both adults by then, but what if someone else, what if one of the parents had come and say, or a friend even, Esau, don't do that. That's not a good idea. Or if someone had come along and say, Jacob, you really gonna do that to your brother? I think we're going to have a different situation in that case. And I, I think that's what the church has to be in the business of being. That friend or that brother or that parent or that adult who says, are you really going to do that to him or to her? I want to hasten to, to an encouraging word for, for Jacobs of the world, the ones with the lentil stew, the one with the red stuff, the one with the stew on the fire. I want to say to them, or to us, really, share the red stuff. You know, some of us will say, well, I don't have much, but whatever a little bit we do have, it is still red stuff that we can share with others. To whom much is given, much is expected. Jesus divided all of living into two parts. The love of the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second one is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And if we love our neighbor, we will share with them the little stew that we do have, this stew that has been simmering, mm. smells good, I know it tastes good. But we have to be in the business of sharing what we do have, giving to other people. Because, you know, as Jesus reminded us, when we do to the least of these, our brothers and sisters, we do it unto him. And so, I want to say to us today, Share the red stuff. And you know, in life, all that we have is really nothing but stuff. And all of it is stuff. It's not that important. But the love that we show for our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters, and our neighbors, and the stranger, that is the kind of love that Jacob failed to show to his brother Esau. But we have to do something different than what Jacob did. We have to do like Jesus did, sharing with others and loving them and helping them. May God bless us as we seek to serve, sharing with the world the red stuff that we have, whatever the stuff is. Whatever the stuff is. Praise be to God.
blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who has ruled and abide with you, now henceforth and forever, and together the church say, Due to safer at home practices, we encourage our St. Paul family, friends, and all who would like to join us for our weekly virtual worship experience on Facebook and YouTube. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our page and channel. Again, thank you and God bless.